Hey, preteens, Miss Leah. So glad you're with me again this week. Our lesson this week is going to come from the book of Daniel, and we are going to be learning about Daniel. As you'll remember, Daniel came to Babylon with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he's actually the same person who interpreted the dream for King Nebuchadnezzar, the one about the tree being cut down to the stump. Now we're going to fast forward several years. At this point, Daniel is about 80 years old and he is still in Babylon. Now Babylon is not the strong and mighty kingdom that it was once. Was once. However, um, it has started to decline. But King Darius is the king over Babylon at this time. And he has actually chosen several men throughout the kingdom to be the leader of smaller parts of his kingdom. So think of it this way. We have the president who is president over the United States. And then each state has a governor and those governors are responsible for those particular states. It was kind of like that. Well, Daniel has caught the eye of King Darius. Daniel is a godly man. Daniel is successful. Daniel is does well at his job. And King Darius notices this, and he decides that he is going to put Daniel in charge of the kingdom as a whole. And as you can imagine, the other leaders that are part leaders of the smaller parts get jealous of this. So they formulate a plan to get Daniel in trouble. And so they go to King Darius and they say, we have this great idea. Why don't you send out a decree in the kingdom that for the next 30 days, no one is allowed to pray to another God or bow down to another God other than yourself or your God. And they make this sound like a really great idea. They're kind of uh, feeding in to King Darius's um, confidence. You know, they want to help boast him. So he sends out this decree. And then the other leaders sit back and watch and wait because they know for a fact that Daniel is a godly man and they know that Daniel is going to continue to pray to his God. They just have to catch him at the right moment. So they sit back and they wait. And sure enough, Daniel continues to go into his house three times a day to pray to God. And they just can't wait to run back to King Darius and let him know what they found. So they run back and they tell King Darius, look, Daniel is not following your decree. He's still bowing down to his God three times a day. You know what you have to do. Well, this hurt King Darius because, not because he was upset that Daniel was um, praying to God. He was upset because he really cared about Daniel and he knew that he had to punish him. I mean, his, his whole power was at stake here. If he didn't follow through with his punishment like he decreed, then there's no telling what the rest of the kingdom would do. So he calls Daniel in and he has to send Daniel to the lion's den and he tells him, man, I hope your God comes through for you, Daniel. You know, I care about you. I don't want the lions to eat you, but I don't have a choice. So hopefully your God's going to take care of you. And he throws him in the lion's den. And he goes to bed that night and he can't sleep. He's very fitful. He's worried. And the next morning he gets up and he runs to the den and yells to Daniel, Daniel, you know, I hope you're still there. Please tell me that your God spared you. And Daniel responded and said, I'm here. God sent an angel and the angel closed the mouth of the lions and no harm has come to me. This made King Darius happy, and he brings him out of the lion's den. And then this is where we're going to pick up in Daniel chapter 6. We're going to start reading in verse 24. And it says, At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and people of every language in all the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he endures forever. 
His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. In the last verse there, verse 28, So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So, God had given Daniel gifts, and Daniel used those gifts well. He walked in his purpose. He walked in the purpose that God had for him. And when times got tough, he didn't deny his faith. Instead, he continued to worship God, even though there was a decree that he was not supposed to. Because of that, God spared his life, and God changed the heart of a king. God changed the heart of a nation because this king sent out a new decree saying that Daniel's God was a worthy God, was the one true God. And as it said in uh, chapter 26, for he is the living God and he endures forever. Guys, we are all given gifts by God. My gift is different than your gift. Your gift is different than the person next to you. And it's not about whose gift is better because no gift, no one gift from God is better than the other. It's about how you use those gifts. And as long as you are using the gifts God has given you to further his kingdom and to bring him glory, there is no room for jealousy. Listen, I wish that I could sing. I love to sing. And when I'm in my car, I sound like Whitney Houston. I'm just going to say it. But, <laughs> But most people don't don't feel that way when they hear me sing. Singing is not a gift of mine. I do it, and I make a joyful noise unto the Lord. But I can promise you I'm never going to be called up on stage with Pastor Stu to sing with the band. I can assure you of that. But there are people in our church who have been given that gift. And it is such a blessing to listen to them uh, encourage us each week with worship through music. Now, I am not a pastor. God did not give me that gift. But Brother Tom and Brother Matt, that's what God intended for them to do. They walk in their purpose and they do it well. So, while I may not ever be on the center stage of the worship center, that's okay with me because God didn't give me those gifts. But I can take the gifts that he did give me and I can use those to bring him glory. It's not about being known or being famous or um, having people look at you with reverence. It's about doing what God has called us to do with what he has given us to make that happen. I hope you guys realize that. Find what your gift is and use it well. Use it for God's kingdom. You can't go wrong with that. I love you guys a whole bunch, and I'll see you next week.